Berlin computer programmer Björn Pitz carries more than 16 million tunes around in his pocket. He pays Spotify about 10 euros a month for the music. Spotify is a portal that streams music straight to your smartphone. It makes owning copies of music unnecessary. Access is everything to me. Wherever I am, at work or on the road, I need access to the entire catalog. I don't need a record collection at home. And if I want something new, I can search for it and play it. More than 13 million users pay subscription fees for ever more streaming services popping up all over the world. Even more users stream for free, but they have to put up with commercial breaks. Services like Spotify of Sweden don't sell albums or singles, but simply the right to stream at any time. It's an offer designed to make illegal downloads less tempting. We started Spotify, we built it as an alternative to piracy. And the whole thing was really about how do we create a better product than piracy. Can subscription streaming rescue a floundering music industry? Spotify is only three years old, but it's passed a good 200 million euros onto recording labels so far. I have grown up with search and, and, and streaming services like Napster, and all these services were very good for a consumer perspective, but it never ever really worked from, from a label perspective. But not all producers or consumers see much future in the new services. Executives at Berlin's electronic music label Mobile Records are skeptical. The independent label and its artists see very little of the revenues. A thousand streams of a song can sometimes earn less than one euro. The major labels that put their entire catalogs onto these streaming platforms get their small share back, of course. But the independent labels and individual musicians basically get nothing back at all for their creative contributions. Sascha Kösch is a co-founder of the Berlin music magazine Debug. He sees good prospects for musicians in the new services. It's mostly good for people who've got lots and lots of listeners. They don't even necessarily have to be mainstream. Sometimes it can go really fast. All it takes is a viral effect to kick in at some point and you can get a few million listeners on a tune. There can be a catch or two for the users as well. As vast as the catalogs can be, not all titles are available. Bands like the Beatles, for instance, are missing. And when the subscription ends, the music does too. With services like this, the users ought to be perfectly aware from the start that it'll only work as long as they're in it. As soon as they're out, they can lose the playlists they've worked hard to put together. And then they'll have to start all over again. In spite of the criticism, user figures keep climbing. As a business model, it seems to have a future. Shift says, sounds like acoustical paradise.